welcome to another featured interview. I'm here with Michael Barrett, who's the Executive Officer for the Asia Pacific Travel Retail Association. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming to talk to us today. Thanks for talking to us. Um, I wanted to ask you a, a question initially about the new regulations from the Indian government uh, about the allowances for tobacco goods. Um, how do you think this is going to uh, affect the industry? What are the, what are the implications that you're going you're to see? Obviously, it's it's uh, quite troubling. And um, yeah, how do, how do you think we are going to be able to adapt and change? Uh, well, the, the reality is that we have to adapt and change when governments decide unilaterally without consulta consultation mm. uh, that they're going to cut allowances. Um, the retailers in India had to obviously change uh, their uh, stocks um, and merchandising straight away, mm. uh, especially obviously in arrivals. Uh, I know Delhi Duty Free put into place uh, the sales of uh, single packets and all the cartons had to go up to departures. Uh, more importantly, it's other retailers around the world then have to align and ensure that they're not selling, uh, overselling to India-bound passengers. And that's so it's why a very, it was also um, yeah. emphasising that you, you know, please you know, warn your customers that this is, this is indeed the case and responsible retailing. Exactly, yeah, it's all part of the responsible retailing um, drive that we have to push is that retailers around the world have to therefore be responsible mm -hmm. uh, as they do with Hong Kong bound or Singapore bound passengers now India is in a, in a similar case or it's probably even more complex because mm -hmm. they can only sell half a carton or one carton to two travelers mm -hmm. um, but you know the, the this is an, another example of a government unilaterally taking a decision without considering what all the impacts and the effects mm -hmm. are going to be uh, which is why we are working uh, Adaptra very closely with the uh, Duty Free World Council mm -hmm. and other associations uh, who are members of the DFWC uh, to try and impress upon governments that you know we need to be consulted, mm -hmm. that we are, this is who we are as an industry, mm -hmm. and when legislation like this is put into place, these are the impacts, the economic impacts in terms of uh, lost revenues, uh, lost jobs potentially, um, and the ripple effects that has um, in terms of you know, economic, GDP growth, whatever it might be. Um, so governments eventually will stand back perhaps and um, we hope consider us uh, as a, a stakeholder to consult before going forward, us, APTRA or the, the duty for industry generally. Mm -hmm. Well you mentioned just then the responsible retail training program, I know you guys have made great progress mm -hmm. um, on that and just tell me about the partners you're working with and yeah. how that's going. Well, we launched that this summer. Um, DFS uh, piloted this in uh, Changi Airport, who uh, fully endorsed it, and it went very well. We had a, a significant number of their staff trained up, and uh, we see the results, a uh, very high success rate uh, of their staff being trained up and now certified as responsible retail trained. And um, the other airports are now following suit. So uh, DFS, it's with, so, it? yeah, it's a fantastic one to start with, and Changi Airport are very kindly endorsed uh, the, the program um, to, to DFS, of course, but uh, to other airports. Mm -hmm. So they're now knocking on doors of the retailers saying, you know, we'd like you to, to follow suit and, and, and do what DFS have done in Changi. Uh, World Duty Free Group has signed up a, um, a number of people. Um, we're getting sign ups uh, a number every week um, to, to, to take the training. Daddy Duty Free is another one who uh, previously um, weren't members of the association but uh, realized the value and quickly signed up so they could also participate in that. And, uh, we're now communicating more and more. We've, we've got these endorsements and a good um, benchmark mm -hmm. uh, and a good precedent to say to other retailers, look, you know, uh, you should really take this on board because uh, you, you, the, the competition are doing it. So yeah. they're going to be endorsed as responsible retailers and their airports are going to be looking very much into which retailers are having their staff trained up on this program. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's good for them and it's, it's good for us as well. Absolutely. Um, the database is mm -hmm. now live. Yep. Um, just how valuable do you think this, this tool is? It's interesting because <laughs> Uh, when we spoke in, in Singapore, um, this was work in progress and it was almost finalised. Mm. And uh, this time last year in Cannes, I was going around talking to prospective members. Mm. And uh, I mean, we signed up a number of new companies, both in Cannes and in, in uh, Singapore, but um, also we were faced with a lot of blank faces. 
Mm. Um, so work in progress, work in progress. But now the Responsible Retail Training Program is launched. The database is now launched and it's ready as a workable, usable tool. And when you explain all this to, to companies um, who are interested, perhaps joining Aptra, yeah. um, some are con feel con you know, concerned by advocacy, although it concerns everybody. Yeah. Some feel concerned by the research that we do and uh, see the value in that. But specifically uh, for, um, well, companies small and big alike, um, when they see the value of this tool, they suddenly, oh yes, we really uh, do see the value of uh, joining Aptra, not just for that, that, but definitely this, because it's part of our mission is driving growth and connecting, facilitating context between industry stakeholders. Mm. And uh, this is a tool where if you're a small brand looking to find out who is the purchasing manager for your category for that retailer in that airport, then you can go direct and find that person. Mm. And the same way for supply, for airports or retailers who don't have a specific supplier, they can see the full uh, database of suppliers and the right people to contact for, for brands that they want in their airport. So the value is perceived uh, immediately. It's a very easy, easy sell, thankfully. You know, and uh, all this is based on <clears throat> what, are our members, what do our members want? You know, we, we, uh, every couple of years we're surveying our members to say, uh, what should you? What should we be doing uh, as a service for you, our members, as the industry association? And the responses that we get back, that we analyse that, and we thankfully can see that you know we're doing the right, we're in the right direction already. Um, but we can see and and um, tweak our strategy going forward and say, okay, we should be doing more of this or more of that or less of this. And so it, that was one of the key um, services that came out of that uh, survey that we've done again just recently. Uh, so it is perceived as something that's very positive for, for, the, for the members. So um, you've just completed some very interesting research mm -hmm. um, and uh, there were some really, really interesting insights to come out of that. Um, what's been the reaction to the research and what can we expect from you guys in terms of research in the sort of near future? Yeah, well, I mean, the research we've just completed is, is just part six of a 12-part research program. Uh, we can't, every month, more or less, we're churning out the next report, the next report, because there's so much of it. Mm. Um, we don't do um, one big market report uh, on, for example, uh, Asia-Pacific travellers and, and then uh, um, distribute a 200-page report, which is not very easily digestible or readable or, or uh, easy to analyse. Mm. So we break it down, uh, and every month there's a new theme from fashion and accessories to to the the impact of security regulations and gifting or whatever the theme might be and we've got another uh, six uh, topics to come out in the next few months and research came out in this member survey I just mentioned uh, as uh, one of the top priorities that we should be continuing to do on behalf of our members so and that particular survey we also asked what specific themes of research would you like us to look at mm -hmm. so specific markets what type of traveler and so on so we're able to also tweak our um, research strategy going forward uh, so what we initially had planned to do we might um, uh, alter it slightly and, and um, bring in different markets perhaps <clears throat> that uh, came out as, as priority in that in that survey um, what it also enabled us to do is uh, reassure ourselves that China is very much on uh, in the uh, in the sights of our members as well um, as a key target market to know more about the consumer insights. Uh, do you think that's justified? Oh, Still? totally. Yeah, I mean, you, you see, with the new legislation, oh, well, the the, the clampdown on on uh, luxury consumption, yeah. the Chinese market is changing drastically. People are consuming differently, and so uh, we'll be doing a very um, bespoke China uh, research pro, uh, uh, project uh, early next year, uh, January February, so we can present the really up to date data um, at the uh, TFWA uh, after China conference, mm -hmm. which we're China Century conference, which we're very happy to be partnering mm -hmm. with TFWA on. And um, I mean that that's um, you know it's a key value, for a key benefit for our members because mm -hmm. they get an exclusive member research. But then all the participants at the conference as well, um, you know they, they they will get some top line, very in, insightful uh, data as well on Chinese consumer behaviour. So it's uh, it's a key value for our for our for our members, but it's also a good service to the industry as well to, to be able to share that with the industry generally, even those companies are not members. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it also is good for Aptron because they can see the kind of uh, service we provide to, to the 100 plus companies who are members of Aptra. Mm, well, I look forward to hearing yeah. the outcomes of, uh, of that research and, and what you have to say at that time. Well, 
thank you for talking to us today. It's Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, as usual. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, catch up soon. Look forward to it. Thanks, Charlotte.